Hi everyone, and welcome to another video. So we're going to cover how to detect objects in images using ML.NET, a machine learning framework that will let you use your .NET skills to implement machine learning into your apps. In this case, we will be using a pre-trained model with the ONNX format. ONNX is a standard format to get models from any other machine learning framework, like TensorFlow, CoreML, Keras, PyTorch, and many more. OK, let's begin by understanding how a machine learning model works. The machine learning models normally have inputs and outputs. The inputs are the values that we need to provide, and the outputs are the predictions based on all the data in the model. The input has a specific format that it requires to work with the model, and the output will have a specific format based on the model that will provide us the data we require, and maybe we need to parse to get a result, a prediction. In this case, here I have the tiny YOLO B2 model, which is a pre-trained model in TensorFlow converted to on an X. So we can use it with machine learning.net, ML.net. OK, here I have the input, the first thing here, which is an image. As you can see, the format of, the, of this input is a three-dimensional array of three x416 x416 it represents an image of 416 of width and 416 of height three channels the three channels are the rgb so it's an, ima an image of in rgb with this resolution cool we can get that and we'll get into that when we check the code but let's see the outputs the output is a grid with one with 125 values 13 columns and 13 rows. OK, let's see a graphic example of this. Here, I have the image already converted into the output grid. So what we will get, it's a 13 column and 13 rows grid with each cell containing 125 values. What happens inside those 125 values is that those are not a single thing. Are five boxes of 25 values each one. The first four values are things about the position of that box inside the cell. The position, the left position, top position, the width and the height of the box that contains an item. The confidence about the values, about the labels, that it's the five the five value from the 25 in the box and then a lot uh, 20 more items that represent the confidence about each label covered by the model okay that's hard to understand but let's see how it works so imagine that the first label on the model is car that's the first label registered we can see that in the documentation of the model this will give me the confidence if there is a car in the in that box in that cell. So it will give me zero if there is no car in it. It will give me ninety nine if there is a car in there. So based on that, we can detect what's on the picture. It will it, it has. 20 possibilities of what it can be. We can check what represents the one, the two, the three, whatever, the all the values. Every value has a tag, maybe flower, car, whatever. So we can validate those values and know what's on that picture. Let's see an example by checking the code. OK, so I created a class called the image object detector, and it has a method that returns a Boolean called image has object. I send the path of my image and the object that I'm looking for. So I can send the path of the image and maybe a, a airplane. And I can see if that image provided has an airplane in it. Let's see how the code works. First, I instantiate my ML context, which contains all the operations to convert my inputs and get the outputs from a model. So. I need to process my data. First, I load it. To load it into my context, I go to machine learning context data, load from enumerable, and I take the path 
uh, of my image as an input and I leave an output property that will be used for, for in ML context to reference this item, this image. So we need to convert it to what our model expects. If we go back to Netron here and go to the top, we will check that it requires an image called image literally this is, this is a name of a variable it's not referencing the type it's just a variable called image that we need to fulfill and it needs to have three channels the three colors and 416 and 416 of size an image with width 416 and height 416 if our image doesn't match that format, then it will explode. So we need to convert it exactly to what the model expects. To do that, first we load the images. We take the value from the input, we load the image, and it will leave it into the output. We have to provide the image folder in case that we have a folder that contains all the images provided. So we don't have to use the, we, we can use the relative path through to that folder. In this, in this case, I have my full path there. So I don't need to do that. OK, now that that's done, we need to resize the image to the 416 expected. So my input will be the last output, the loaded image. This is my input, the loaded image. And the output will be on the same property, output. Uh, so I take the original image, I resize it to the size expected, and I leave it as the output. So now I have a resized image at this step. Now that the, the image is resized, I'm going to extract the pixels. I'm going to extract uh, the three values for each pixel. What is the three values of each pixel? This, this returns the RGB uh, for each pixel. It converts it into the array expected. So I will have uh, three values, 416 pixels, uh, multiplied by 416 pixels, I will have every single pixel with the with their three values to get exactly what the what the model expects a three channel a three-dimensional array with pixels and the rgb colors so i receive the the input and i output it as an image you remember that the name of the of the input is image okay now my image it's outputted as the variable image for the model so now I have to apply my model. After I converted my image and I have exactly the format that the model is expecting, I can apply my model and tell him, okay, take the image and convert it into the output that you will provide me, and which we will specify. So I take the model file. This is the ONNX file that I have on my project. Assets, machine learning, tiny YOLO B2, ONNX, the same one that I have open in Netheron. And I tell it, okay, your input is going to be the image that I that I created on the last step. And the output will be a grid. What is the grid? The thing that we already saw, the image here, which has a 13 columns, 13 rows, five boxes in every cell. And in those five boxes, we have 25 values, the five first features, and the other 20 probabilities of which labels uh, that square has. So now we need to make our type fit this 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 model. What happens is that we need to fit it. What happens when you fit? You set a schema to that type. So if we have a type called person and we want to to make it fit into our pipeline, then first we need to make fit and wherever whenever we send. Uh, a person to the transform method to process it, it will detect that it has to run this pipeline. So cool. What happens is that first we tell whenever you see this type, you need to run this pipeline. Now, we, because we can do it right there, uh, we not we don't only fit, but we transform uh, at the same time. Uh, okay, we we tell okay you have to run this process process now in the data that I provided you just transform it what will happen is that it will run the all this pipeline step by step including my model and it will give me my output my the, the result of the of this conversion so now if I get I can get the column grid which is exactly the column that I said it was the output 
this is the result of the mo the model that I have here. As as you, we, if we go down, we see that the grid, it's the output. So this grid has a structure of 125 x 13 x 13, 125 values, 13 columns and 13 rows. So every every cell has 125 values. Why 125 values? Because the 25 values, uh, every 25 values, we will have a uh, five features: x, y, w, which is width, height, o, which is confidence, and then 20 other values, which represent in the order of of, of labels, uh, which probably it's that it's an item. For example, um. I have a prediction parser which basically takes all those floats, which is a, an, a linear float array with like 21,000 values and convert it into a more readable uh, thing. I'm not going to explain that one. You can check the documentation of the Jolo model to understand how it works inside and how you can parse it and use the values that you need from the array. In this case, I just took the values that I need from the labels, but it's a mathematic process that will take a long time to explain. So I'm not going to cover that. If you want to learn how to parse a YOLO model, you can go to the YOLO model documentation and check how it works and what, what are those 21,000 values and what you want to take. So here I have an array which represents the order of every item in a, after the five features. So I have my five features, X, Y, with hate and confidence, and then I have 20 values. The first value is the percentage of the image to be an aeroplane. The second, bicycle. The third, bird. So it will give me a value from 0 to 1 after conversion, of course. After conversion, it will give me a value from 0 to 1, uh, representing, if we, uh, uh, by order, which of these items is. So if I go to the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the 4, no, the, the fifth item after the features, I will have the probability of that box being a bottle. So that's how I can get uh, how I can get which labels are available. I just go through all the 20 values after uh, the features. Uh, after the features, and I can see, okay, this is the, the first one represents an aeroplane. Uh, how much possibility is that it is an aeroplane? Oh, zero then it's not an aeroplane and that's how i work with the model so now that we know that and that we're ta doing the process to understand the model and get the values from it i already did a parser which uses the logic that i already explained to see what labels are mathematics arrays a lot of loops and stuff to check the twenty-one thousand values and get the labels from those and that's how I can check that if, if I get all the labels that are available and I can check if any of those values of those labels match the label expected, the which I send in the parameter. And if it exists a label that which matches the one that I sent, then it will not be null, which means that it will be true. And that's what I validate if the image has an object. Now I can use it in my controller. How here I just uh, make a temporary image with the with the one received from the API. I take the image, I save it into a temporary file, and then I call my image object detector. Image has object. I send the image and I tell has a car. And if it doesn't have a car, then I can send a validation exception telling that the image doesn't contain a car. And it will fail, letting my users not upload anything else that it's not a car, because it's in this case, I'm having a car API, which should only let my users upload cars. Let's see if it works. So let me run the API. Here I have my swagger. Let me restart it to start from zero. And I'm going to try it out by adding a car picture. This would should work perfectly because it is a car and my API only expects cars. So you can see it worked. But what happens if I don't upload a car? 
like maybe this fruit. I execute and it says the image doesn't contain the car, which is great. That, that means that my users cannot upload anything, a, 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 anything else that is not a car in my car API. And it will help me so I don't have to validate each picture uploaded and delete it myself, which is a manual process that I had to do if my algorithm, if this algorithm with ML.net didn't, did not, doesn't, it didn't exist, but it exists. So I can validate anything that it's on my pictures. This is just the beginning of what computer vision can do. Check more models. There are models for everything in the world. You can check anything, skin colors, uh, eye color, age, gender, every, every single thing on a picture is mo it, 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 it's on a model somewhere. So you can check it out, check how the model, what are the model inputs, what are the model outputs and use it at your benefit. There is a, li a full library of, of, of models and using ONNX, you should be able to use a model uh, from any t any framework. If you have seen a model that's on TensorFlow, you can use it. Just convert it to ONNX. It's a really a straightforward process. That's it for this video. I really hope you liked it. And I, I will try to provide all the code from that, that you have seen here. So maybe you can implement it or check it out and make some modifications for your own benefit. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, press the like button. It's right there and it's easy to click. You can also subscribe and check our other videos, which are great. See you later and have a happy coding. <laughs>